It's Lamar Gibbs. Welcome to the Thoughts of Redemption podcast, where we celebrate the process of thought and God's hand in it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this newest episode on the podcast. It's a really special topic, as they all are, but this is a special podcast in, in that this is the last podcast of the first season. This is the 10th podcast, the 10th episode that I've done. So it's a great episode for me to to clip this first season on and I'll be taking a short break, two week break and then getting right back on right during the week of my birthday, September 13th, the 30th birthday. Woo woo! But yeah, turning 30 soon, but this will be the last episode for this first season. And this is based off of a quick thought video that I put up on YouTube and on social media about complete manhood, how what makes our manhood complete as men, speaking to the men specifically. And so I'm just I'm gonna play the audio from the video like I did for emotional intelligence, which is crazy because the first episode was based off of the video that I did for a quick thought on emotional intelligence, and now I have a video here about the quick thought about manhood. So check this out. One of the first things that the Lord said after creating Adam was, it is not good that man should be alone. Usually we take this passage to mean that marriage should take place because a man shouldn't be alone. But I believe that because of the dominion mandate that God gave Adam to steward all of creation, he saw that man shouldn't be alone in companionship as far as like relating together and having dominion. Now, of course, with Adam and Eve being married and, and things of that nature, it, it, marriage plays a big part. But I believe that as a man, in order to express manhood, in order to grow in manhood, we need women from humanity because women come from man in order to, to really live complete as a man, to learn how to live as a man and to learn to live in your manhood. And so let us cherish the women in our life, with the, whether friends or loved ones or a significant other. Cherish women in our lives because God saw that we needed them and it was not good for us to be alone. So as I said before, that was a quick thought video on complete manhood. And it, at the end of this episode, when you finish listening to it, if you want to send an email in or anything about any thoughts that you have about it and about what I'm about to talk about, please do send it in. But I really felt led to do that quick thought video because of a part of a sermon or rather I, I've been hearing about the verse that I mentioned, the, the verse in Genesis where it said it is not good for man to be alone. And so he put Adam to sleep and, and made woman from his rib and, and things of that nature. And I heard the verse from, shout out to Richie Righteous. I went to his church. Uh, they were doing a Bible study on the book of Genesis. And then I heard um, recently from my own pastor where he spoke about uh, men and women and, and spoke about not being alone. And so it pressed on my heart to really speak on this. And it's not something that you usually hear often because when you often hear things about manhood, you usually hear things about uh, what it means to, to express yourself emotionally or what it means to take responsibility uh, my pastor came out with a book called four things women want from a man and the four things were decisiveness consistency strength and maturity these are things that as men uh we have to step up and and, and take leadership responsibility and lead with humility and lead with grace and things of that nature but i started to realize how we need our thoughts changed on how manhood relates to the second half of humanity which is just as important as as manhood which is womanhood uh eve was a father of uh, the mother of all women and womanhood was an integral an integral part in displaying what the image of god is because the bible says in the image of god he made man and woman in the image of god he made them and then he said it was earlier that it was not good for man to be alone. And so he was basically saying that in order to complete the image of God, men and women needed to unite together in exercising the dominion that he called Adam and Eve to exercise. He called man, mankind, to exercise on earth. He, he had called us to exercise dominion over the, the, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And the, and the animals of the land and, and just all of creation utilizing all of his resources and this was in a perfect world this was not an imperfect world this was before sin came into the world he called mankind to exercise dominion as image bearers of god 
And so men and women were called to, to, to exercise stewardship responsibility, servant leadership, and, and, and dominion over the authority in, 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 in the domain of this planet. And God saw fit to create women out of man, knowing that women were dependent on God forming them via the man, out of the man, and men are dependent on women to come into being, to come into this world. They come through women. And it, it's just really interesting how when we often talk about what it is for women to operate in society, to operate in our churches, you know, there's a lot of discussions about women pastors and women in leadership and, and things of that nature and how to engage with these things. We don't often talk about how women were given the mandate just as man was to exercise dominion. So they had the ability to rule with mankind, with man, I should say, to rule with man over the earth that God gave man to rule over, which God ultimately was the ruler. So we were kind of what you would call vice regents. So he placed us over a specific area, which is planet earth. God is a ruler of the universe. He created the universe. He created its, its precepts, its orders, ordinations, and all that kind of stuff that happens on a regular basis. And he had rule over the planet Earth. The Earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God said this. And yet still he gave us dominion over his planet to steward it and to use it to demonstrate the glory of God and things of that nature. And so it really led me to thinking about the completion of manhood because once he created man and man was naming all of the animals and things of that nature he said it was not good for, for man to be alone and and so it, it, it wasn't good for him to be alone and exercising the dominion over this earth and it really makes you think what was it about woman being the etzer of god aka the, the the helper in hebrew the helper was it, was it that women were to serve man and do whatever he wanted? No, the helper was to literally help exercise authority. They were to be support. They were to, to make decisions uh, in unity with, with man. Um, and they held equal standing in value uh, towards the Lord, even if they had different responsibilities and things of that nature that we can debate about. But overall, the basis level of womanhood is that they were given the authority to exercise dominion as a helpmate to to Adam, as to uh, helpmate to men, and and they they are equal in value. They're equal in, in in their humanity to men. They have gifts, talents, and abilities just like men do. They are able to to challenge things. They're able to to make things happen, and and so. What I was saying in the video was it is important for men to have healthy, loving relationships with the women in their life, whether it's their mother, their sisters, their friends, their romantic interests, strangers that they interact with at the job, on the job, in church, in the political sphere and in entertainment. And when we aren't treating women as they are supposed to be treated and our our masculinity our manhood is toxic and we interact with women with objectification we interact with women where we where we uh, cast inferiority onto them when we interact with women in a way that this is dismissive of their accomplishments dismissive of their gifts their talents and abilities is dismissive of the image that they bear and, and we make them subservient to us, our manhood is not complete. We're not complete to walk out the manhood that we were created to walk out as image bearers of God because we are not walking in the united community with women. And I've said it before in podcasts past or in blogs past that God himself is a community within himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are all co-equal in their nature. They are separate persons in the, as, as a triune God, but they were co-equal in their natures. But just because Jesus was a servant of God did not mean that he was under God in his nature. And so it is very important that as human beings, as men, 
to the men I'm talking to, that if we are to exercise our manhood in a complete way, we are to respect, value, cherish, and treat women as God designed them to be treated, as image bearers of God that were given the dominion mandate, to given the mandate to exercise dominion over all of creation. And when you do that, and when you learn how to treat women, when you learn how to value women and in their input, when you learn how to love them, to not objectify them, to not manipulate them, to not abuse them based on the inclinations and the lusts of your heart, you learn how to be a man because you learn how to take responsibility for the feelings that you that you have. You don't you don't give your decision making to your emotions. You don't give your decision making to your hormones. You don't give your decision making to the moment, but you are intentional. As, as, as I said with the four things that women want from a man, uh, decisiveness, you're decisive as a man, you're, you are mature as a man, you are consistent as a man. When you're, when you're challenging yourself, because if you're, if you're challenging yourself to be a man in all these different areas, but you're not challenging yourself in the way that you look at women, the way that you th think about women, the way you interact with women, your manhood is automatically stunted. Your manhood, is, it, it, it's, it's a certain level that you don't go beyond because you're not really completely dealing with yourself as a man and the responsibility that you have as a man to lead and to provide and to, and to serve with love womankind. And specifically in marriage, if you're not serving your wife in love, you're not being the husband that God has called you to be. And so I really encourage you with this. I encourage you to... To check where you are as a man when it comes to, to your thoughts about women, the way you interact with women, how you think about them, like I said, your thoughts, how you approach a woman in your life. How do you uh, honor your mother? How do you honor your sisters? How do you honor your cousins? How do you honor uh, women at your job? Do you treat them dismissively when, you, when they have suggestions? Women were built to be help me. They were built to help. They were built to, to see things in sensitive ways that are unique to them. There are similarities with men. Men do these things too, but there's a there's a gifting, there's an there's an ability, there's a there's a precious preciousness, there's a, there's a there's a virtue that women have that he gave to them to complete the manhood that was being established and and, and, and demonstrated as as people that had dominion, as men that had dominion along with women and so I, I encourage you to, to bring before the Lord what your mindset is towards women in your life what your mindset is towards womanhood what are your thoughts about uh, women women in the workplace women in in politics women in in whatever area how, how, how do you wrestle with women being able to, to make a difference in society how do you how do you deal with Proverbs 31 and a woman having an important place in that proverb. How do you deal with with the the shifting tides of society and, and still being able to hold to a biblical standard of womanhood and manhood and being able to honor them as they ought to be honored? How do you how do you appreciate women in your life? How do you think about the things that they go through? How do you grow in your sensitivity to the things that they have to deal with as strong women? that were created to deal with things like pregnancy, to deal with things like a uh, motherhood, where it literally transforms them in, in, in their motivations and their the things that they need to do. And so I, I really encourage you all to, as men, specifically the men, and, and me personally in my life, I will do the same thing. I challenge you to think about how you are engaging your, in your life with women in your life. And a lot of times you will find that the direct is a direct correlation with the engagement that you have towards women to what your manhood is because it exposes where you where you are how do you think and how you interact with other people once again i appreciate you all for tuning in to every episode of the podcast i look at the numbers i look at the comments i'm so grateful that things have blessed you and if you have it in your heart to so into this i know it's a christian word but if you have the the, the heart 
to give financially uh, to this effort, to any other effort, please um, click on the listener support option on anchor.fm slash thoughts of redemption. You can find the, the listener support there. You can find it on any of the podcast outlets that I'm on Spotify. It's an information thing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in Apple Podcasts, things of that nature. If you want to go directly to the blog and, and send money via PayPal, you can send it. The link is on there on thoughtsofredemption.com slash donations. If you want to send it through the Cash App, my Cash App is Lamar Gibbs. You'll find me on there. You can send me anything. But I'm just honored to do this ministry, to, 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 to give of myself and to produce all of this content for Thoughts of Redemption. It's such a great privilege and an honor for me to do so. And I will continue to do so by the grace of God. And I thank God for the doors that he's opening. And I trust him to continue to lead me, to guide me, and to use me in this way. And continue to pray for me. I ask for your prayers. I really solicit and cover your prayers for my life, for this thoughts of redemption and things that are to come in the future. And uh, I'm so grateful once again for you all listening. So may you take care. Uh, continue to, to think about this, this podcast. And I hope it's a blessing unto you. May God bless you in this weekend. God bless you in the coming week. And stay tuned in the next two weeks for the next season that's coming. And God bless y'all.